Lawyer kicks out date, so she ruins $300,000 worth of his art. A tipsy Dallas woman on a first date with some douchey Houston trial lawyer went on a rampage and destroyed at least $300,000 U.S. dollars worth of his art collection. Lindy Lou Lehman was arrested on Saturday on criminal mischief charges after her date with Anthony Busby ended not so well. Busby claims Lehman got too blasted on their date, so after he took her to his house, he called her an Uber. So why'd he take her to his McMansion in the first place? Apparently, Lehman refused to leave and played a game of hide-and-seek. After being found, Busby called a second Uber. That's when Lehman apparently went bananas and tore down several paintings, including two Andy Warhol works together worth a cool mill, and poured red wine over some of them too. She also tossed around a couple of $20,000 sculptures and introduced them to the floor. <laughs> Guess that's what happens when you're named Busby. You get stung. Like coloring by numbers? Keep watching. Uh, she might want to improve her selfie game. This woman will probably think twice before she snaps selfies in the future, since when she did so last Thursday in a Los Angeles art gallery, the result was 200,000 US dollars in damages. The woman was viewing an installation called Hypercane, which was a collaboration between Hong Kong artist Simon Birch and other artists including Gabriel Chan, Jacob Blitzer, and Gloria Yu. Prior to the incident, CCTV footage showed visitors carefully admiring and walking around a room decorated with dozens of rectangular pedestals holding sculpted crowns and other headpieces. Then came the clumsy visitor and her friend. Her friend used an actual camera to photograph the wondrous works. Meanwhile, the clumsy one decided to squat down and snap her selfie, which led to her falling backward into one of the displays, turning the entire exhibition into a game of dominoes. Yikes! After wrecking much of the exhibition, the bumbling visitor actually remained calm and even put one headpiece back onto its pedestal. According to the exhibition's marketing team, three of the sculptures were permanently damaged and others to varying degrees. Factoring in the artist's work time, potential art sales lost, and the repair costs, the estimated damage came out to a total bill of $200,000. Some had speculated the incident was a stunt, but the exhibition confirmed to Fox News that the accident was real and explained it would be irrational for the artists to damage their own work in the hopes of gaining more fame. The art show is already back on display, with one change. Visitors can no longer walk between the rows of art pieces. Though photography is still encouraged. Bull vs. Girl the sculptor of Wall Street's iconic bull is not happy about the tiny bronze human that's been staring down his creation since International Women's Day. Arturo de Modica says his bull is meant to carry an optimistic message of strength, but the presence of fearless girl subverts it to something negative. He wants the city to remove or relocate the statue, claiming he was never asked or consulted about the installation. And with the temporary installation now staying put until February 2018, Team Bull is now demanding to be shown documents detailing how exactly this came to be. While not exactly wrong about Fearless Girl capitalizing on his piece, it's ironic that Demotica is getting riled up about the city not following proper procedures. His bronze bull was basically guerrilla art back in 1987, having been installed without a permit in front of the New York Stock Exchange. The city decided to keep it after it became popular and moved it to its current location. There's also the issue of both pieces being public art and open to interpretation. The meaning of the bull statue changed with the times, probably long before Fearless Girl even got there. For now, Team Bull is trying to resolve their issues with the city amicably, though they're not above suing if they have to. But New York Mayor Bill de Blasio seems to be firmly on Team Fearless Girl, if these tweets are any indication. What's your take on this drama? Are you Team Girl, Team Bull, or Team I Don't Give a f Europe gets its first underwater museum. A museum featuring more than 300 sculptures open to the public this week, 14 meters beneath the sea. The Museo Atlantico Underwater Museum is located off the south coast of Lazarote in Spain's Canary Islands. The museum is the first of its kind in Europe. The 2,500 square meter site is best explored by scuba diving around it. But if you don't want to strap on a wetsuit and oxygen tank, then it can also be viewed through a glass bottom boat. The permanent sculptures are the work of British artist Jason Taylor. All the sculptures have been made with high density pH neutral concrete and no corrosive metals. That's so the artworks don't damage the marine ecosystem and will encourage life to prosper in the area, which is a UNESCO World Biosphere Reserve. 
Some of the works carry a political message, such as this piece depicting migrants crossing the Mediterranean Sea. The artist said it was a tribute to migrants who succeeded, but also to those whose dreams and hopes remain at the bottom of the sea. Taylor said he hoped the museum would foster a better understanding of the marine environment and how much we depend on it. His first underwater exhibition was in Grenada in the Caribbean more than a decade ago. In 2009, Taylor followed that up with an installation at the Cancun Underwater Museum of Art in Mexico. In 2014, this 60-ton sculpture by Taylor became the largest ever installed underwater when it made its debut in Nassau in the Bahamas. Taylor spent the past two years living in Lanzarote, creating artworks for the museum, and started dropping sculptures onto the seabed about a year ago. Hmm, wonder if fish like art. Pennywise pumpkins have taken Halloween art to another level. This Halloween will definitely go down in history as the year of the clown. Okay, maybe last year too. And kind of the year before that. But what's new this year is Pennywise paraphernalia popping up profusely. The IT movie has helped take pumpkin art and jack-o'-lantern carving to a whole new level. Talented pumpkin professionals have taken to Twitter en masse to show off their hauntingly terrifying works of art. Some people went the painting route and came up with some crazy colorful creations, while others elected to go the traditional pumpkin carving path plus a pinch of petrifying Pennywise. But in the end, there can only be one true orange clown to rule them all.